Oh god. That's Bob Vargas. Pirate dude right there. All right, how's it going guys? We are out here on my boat today doing a little rockfish and hopefully sculpting trip trying to load up the freezers. Uh, we got some good weather as you guys can see it's nice and calm. We got Jimmy. Jimmy's up here. The rockfish king. Uh, right now we are trying to catch some mackerel uh, to drop down. If we can get some live mackerel we have a better chance of catching a lean cod but uh, we got some smelt and some live sardine and some frozen squid so far for bait. But yeah, that's fine. Hopefully load up on some rockfish and some sculpin and be back at a decent hour so we're not stuck in traffic because we are up here in Santa Monica Bay today. Um, the whole stretch of ocean that Jimmy and I normally fish is closed to fishing because of uh, the oil spill. So it's forcing us to kind of get out of our little bubble and try somewhere else. So hopefully we catch something cool or just something at all. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we're out here on the first spot, gonna drop her some rockfish. We got frozen squid and sardines for bait. Couldn't make any mackerel. There's like a weird red tide and just tons of like anchovy around. I think I caught one little tiny mackerel, but uh, this should be fine. Obviously we got, I don't know where all these seagulls came from, but they found this pretty quick, but I'm going to strip up some squid and put that on the bottom hook and then do a, a live sardine on the top hook and just kind of adjust from there, see which one gets bit or which one gets bit by a more desirable uh, rockfish species. We are in 490 feet right now, so it's going to be really fun reeling up <laughs> from that deep with uh, 20 or 24 ounces of weight. Is that a sigh, Jimmy? A little bit. <laughs> excited? So I prefer to kind of cut my squid into like longer strips like that. That way when you put it on the, on the hook, it kind of just lays and like flutters naturally. Um, I feel like the fish can inhale it a lot better and it's less likely to pick it off the hook if you, cause you can put it on there once or twice or thread it on three times. Jimmy's making the first drop. I'm gonna let him hit bottom, and uh, if he doesn't get bit, then I'll drop. Did I go? Yeah. All right. On the board. First drop, first rockfish. Like the wrong way. Double on that one, but these are not the size we're looking for, so. Did you even get a bite? Nope. We're gonna pick a different spot on the ledge here. Oh, he's on there. Jimmy's bit. The seagull saw that. Hey, is this oil? Look at this is oil right here. Is it? Yeah. There's like some tar right here, dude. I think I just found some tar. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely tar. That's crazy. This is, uh, we're in an open fishing zone here. But even here, there's oil. 
That's cool. That's pretty cool looking though. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy's first fish. He's on the board. Brown. It's brown. <laughs> <laughs> The one that's in the little charger pack is not charged. Another Mexican. Or no? Dude, Jimmy. <laughs> that was it. Just got real slow. We we're talking about leaving, going to a different spot, and Jimmy just got wrecked by something. Uh, how tight is your drag? Yeah, just keep running. You're good. So it's pulling drag. I got to put that 50 pound on, huh? Got yourself either a big ling cod or a big old cow cod. Sorry, right, dude, you still, you only have another 500 feet. Yeah, you're good. Take your time, dude. That's sick. All right, I'm gonna flip one out while Jimmy's fighting this fish. Oh no, it popped off. Did it? Yeah. Not much you could do there. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. We lost that one. That's something big. All right, so broke him off on 50 pounds. Uh, the line is frayed all the way up the leader, so most likely a type of shark, like a smooth hound or a soup fin, um, because they'll roll and then the line will rub on their, their skin and it kind of makes it feel like that. But still cool to watch. <laughs> yeah, watch you like that thing. It's a thunk. But yeah, so we gotta retie Jimmy here. It also took my five dollar weight somehow. I'll give you five bucks, dude. Just blew this whole thing out. Maybe we should just tie it directly to the line. Yeah. I don't trust that. Dang it. Seriously, that goes, you can, you can see where 
I saw calm water and then it looks like a wind line over here. So that's all dolphin. That's so cool. Honestly, it never gets old seeing them. I've seen them countless times, but every single time, especially with a big pod like this, you can say little babies mixed in. I don't know if they're bad or not. Show the camera, bro. Oh. <laughs> that little chovy is still alive that I caught too. Where? In there? Yeah. All right, we moved in shallower. Try to catch some sculpin. The rockfish were not really cooperating. And Jimmy caught a uh, rockfish in shallow, so kind of weird. But we'll keep drifting this area and hopefully find where the sculpin are kind of hanging out at. Be a little too deep to be honest with you 180 feet right here so we'll give this another 10 15 minutes on the drift and then we'll head in a little shallow oh it's a fiddle dance upset about that time i'm not oh no it's a big one nice on the squid okay they're not touching the sardine that's cool dude yeah it's a cool that's, yeah that's a beautiful one it's pretty sweet yeah, 180 feet is a lot better than 550, huh? And they're the same size, same right size now. Right. <laughs> oh, I got bit on the sardine. Yeah, this is like a really pretty one. Yeah, one sec. Nice. There oh, we go. It's bleeding on my arm. <laughs> All right, that's what we're trying to trying to catch uh this one probably isn't legal but measure him real quick hopefully not get stabbed by him right behind you Jimmy. you got a white fish is it a good one nope. <laughs> nope yep so he's like just shy so we'll let that one go Seagull tried to eat him, that would have been bad. Check out this little guy. Thing's sick looking. Make sure this guy gets down, the seagulls don't eat him.
did that, you kind of feel bad for taking them. But that one's like probably pretty prime eating size. Yeah, it's a good three and a half foot pounder. Such a mean looking fish. Sick, dude. Yeah, I knew it was a good one because he was like head shaking the whole way. Really? Like that. Badass. All right, so we are back at Jimmy's house now. Um, we got, I think, 12 or 13 rockfish. Uh, pretty slow day, but we still ended up with some <laughs> with some, uh, some fish to bring home. So I'm gonna run through a couple fish real quick. Obviously, we're losing our lighting here. So Jimmy's cleaning the boat. We got baby James running around checking out the fish. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these real quick. And then we're gonna make something kind of kind of different with the rockfish with these ones. Um, this time of year, it's kind of it's kind of hard to find, you know, yellowtail or any tuna. So I still crave, you know, sushi. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little recipe with these rockfish where you still can make some sushi out of them. Uh, and yeah, make hand rolls or you know cut rolls, anything like that. So oh, boom, just like that. So that's that little starry that Jimmy caught. Pretty easy. Trace the backbone, cut through the belly, and then there you go. Nice little fillet right there. That's that easy. Uh, pretty soon, this little guy is going to be running around filleting fish on his own. <laughs> Got all the pin bones that's like the belly meat i mean not anything you want to you want to try to salvage there so throw them aside but yeah i'm gonna cut this nice big red that we got here i was right at the end of the day consolation prize right there probably the biggest red i've caught this year probably three three and a half maybe four pounds but um on these bigger ones what i do is i'll, I'll trace one side out so it's almost ready to slab and skin um, but before I slab it, I'll trace it out, flip it over because the big fish, if you cut one of the fillets out, they kind of sit funny and it just makes it a little harder to get all the meat off the other side. So I'll show you what I like to do. Obviously there's a million different ways to fillet a fish, but this is my preferred method. It's what I'm comfortable doing and I feel like I still get the job done quickly and save the most meat off the fish. Poke through right there, pointing the knife down, and right there is where I stop. So that one's already done. So all I have to do is put the knife through right here, slide it all the way down, break that little rib rib cage, and that one's done. But like I said, you flip it over, and it still sits nice and flat. So it makes it a lot easier to trace on this side here. If I had removed that fillet, it'd be sitting kind of awkward, and it just you know you you end up missing a lot of that like that meat right in the middle there so go ahead and trace it on down find that red spine right there boom so i did the same thing on either side you can see right there that's where i like to stop and um, then i go back through obviously you don't want to stick yourself with these spines here so make sure your hands clear of those and just boom that easy so there's that one flip it over skin that one there like that and then this one's already ready to go too same thing No missed meat, just bloodline and a little bit of the belly meat there, but that's got pin bones in it anyways. Trim this little part off and we're good to go. So I'm gonna run through the rest of these and then we'll see you guys in the kitchen and I'll show you guys how to, if you're craving sushi, but you don't have access to yellowtail, tuna, anything like that. You can still make 
something I guess you would call sushi out of rockfish that's still delicious. So we'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, so here is that red. So this is off of obviously just the one fish, like three, three and a half pound red. Um, so this is gonna be more than enough to feed Dylan and I tonight. So I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. So there's still a little, I don't know what that is, like fat or something. Um, not much bloodline on this one, but maybe trim a little bit of that out. A little bit of skin I missed, but yeah, just trim it up a little bit and then I'm gonna cut it into like thin little slices. So once we, uh, throw some of this flour on it and then the tempura batter we'll fry it and then we'll put that in the hand rolls with the cucumber um, avocado and eel sauce i've tried this with like cut rolls before but not hand rolls yet and dylan and i had this conversation the other week and i think we both prefer hand rolls what do you think? Yeah, I love hand rolls because you get the seaweed on the outside and it's like, I love the taste of nori. So, you know, and then big old chunks of whatever fish or whatever you're using and fried fish, it works really well too compared to uh, raw fish, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. The the nori, especially when you have, when you serve it fresh and it's nice and crunchy, it's so good. So yeah, we're just going to trim this up real quick. Do like little thin slices. Should be perfect. All right, so we got our tempura batter here, and then what I like to do is just turn it into a little beer batter. So I'll pour this in the mixing bowl, add a little Oktoberfest there, and then um, a little pepper. Let's pop this guy. Okay. Good. just making sure it's safe. Alright. Oktoberfest is so good. I need to buy more. Oh no! It's November! I should have stocked up. I've been pretty good about my ID, thankfully. So I'll add a little pepper. Just not even close to enough beer. That looks good. Sweet. I'll just add a little flour to sorry, some going out. Uh, the fish just to have that stick a little better before we put it in the oil. Try not to make a mess here. All 
All right, so those are good. Nice little flower coating. They feel nice and dry. We're gonna check the oil. Looks good. First batch in there. Golden brown, listen to that sizzle. Oh, they definitely got teeth. You can see all the rake marks on the other ones from them like biting each other. Their bite force is probably stronger than you. Oh, probably. Yeah. I doubt they'd bite me though. I know. I'd be the first one to get pulled off the boat by a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Eaten alive by a father dolphin. Alright, there's the red. Nice and golden brown. Bring that over here. Yep. All right, so now for the fun part. Um, that's all good. So now we have three sheets of nori that I'm gonna cut in half, and then obviously with a hand roll, just make them, and you gotta eat them right away. Um, you don't have to, but you want to eat them right away because the nori is nice and um, crunchy, but if you let it sit for too long, it gets uh, the rice, there's any moisture in the rice or the fish or the oil. Um, It'll make it kind of soggy, and it doesn't taste as good, in my opinion. Oh, actually, before I get started on that, we got to give a shout out to Brooke and Victor for picking us up this awesome cutting board. Um, <laughs> they they knew we needed it because we were working with this little tiny one, and then we have this gigantor one over here. Victor broke our one that we had while he was here. You don't remember? He broke one? We had a bigger one. Victor broke it. How was either, that one? I remember either on that trip or the trip before. Uh, we, maybe. we had one just like this one and Victor okay. broke it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, Victor's over here smashing stuff and then play it, <laughs> playing it off like he's doing us a favor. No, I'm just kidding. But thank you, Brooke and Victor, for this. It's obviously getting, getting its use. Um, all right, so again, the key is to keep this dry. So I have obviously cut this slit slid it to the side, dried this off, this, you can hear that, nice and dry, you want it crunchy. So now I don't know where to put it though. Uh, we'll set it off to the side. It just goes to show man, if you invite Victor places, don't let him break your stuff. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Taku, Taku, Taku broke, hey, Taku broke something too though. Um, I don't think they put that one in the video. Oh, no, <laughs> we might have to have him tell that story. Yeah. but. <laughs> oh, this is from Kenya? Snap. Right. <laughs> so you want to get a little little bit of water on your hands for the rice, but not too much where um, it obviously will drip down onto the nori or make the rice too, too wet, but I don't know, something like that probably. That actually might be a little too much. Let's go from the corner here. Oh, that would have been the perfect amount, Adam. You second guess yourself. A little bit right there. Ooh, I gotta get the eel sauce out of the fridge. That's important stuff. Dylan heard heard eel sauce and he jumped right up. <laughs> yeah, it's enough. That's that's <laughs> that is the important part. So um, even how thin I cut that rockfish, look, once you put the tempura batter on and fry it, it obviously the batter kind of puffs up a little bit. Um, so I was, I was hoping to put two pieces in per hand roll, but <laughs> that's one. One piece there is, looks perfect, so 
I'll do that. Put a little eel sauce. There's a lot of stuff in here, but you kind of want to make that little corner reach the top there. And then just go ahead and roll it on over. Boom. Just like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool car, dude. Fast and Furious. Yeah, right. Fast and Furious down the street. But there we go. We got our rockfish hand roll um, with the eel sauce and avocado cucumber. And we'll see if Dylan likes it. Oh, let's see. Am I gonna? You gonna film me? Yes. All right. I'm gonna try it with soy sauce. Got a little bit of salt actually. Oh uh, yeah, we need have soy sauce and a little uh, wasabi in there. So. All right, with the eel sauce, let's go to shot. Oh, I heard the crunch. Heard mm. the crunch. Mm-hmm. Tempura fish with eel sauce and soy sauce <laughs> with cucumber. It works. It's delicious. Right. You could sushi a fried rockfish. It works. <laughs> we're not we're not reinventing the wheel by any means here, guys. Um, this is just kind of obviously when it's this late in the season and it's hard to catch sushi quality fish for for raw sushi. You can still do it with rockfish. Just temper about it, fry it up, throw it in there. You still get you know <laughs> the feeling that you're eating sushi, but you still get to go out and catch your your local fish. So. Um, yeah, I, I gotta try it now. Hold on. Mine's a little uglier than yours, but. Looks good. There we go. I mean, I wouldn't be mad if I saw this come on my plate at a sushi restaurant. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of caught me by surprise because it was still hot. And like biting into a hand roll, you right. don't expect it to be hot still. Right. That kind of threw me off, but it is really soft, you're right. Yeah. Like the, the crunchy outside with the fish is soft. Dude, that's, that's actually really good. What do you think compared to like a raw fish roll? Do you think it should be more of a thing that, people, that they serve, you know? As I stuff my mouth. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, okay. That I think that answers your question. Um, absolutely. Um, I wonder if people just get caught up because they want to eat the raw fish and fried fish is. And that's traditional like yeah. Japanese methods or whatnot. True. You know, it's probably frowned upon that I even say that. <laughs> <laughs> How dare but you? It's just delicious. I mean. Yeah, that's that's the texture really difference. You know. So, um, I'll show you on another one, but. I don't know if you can see that, but see that like white, let's turn the light over here. Like really white flaky meat inside that uh, tempura batter there. Yeah, that's delicious. Dylan's ready for number two. I think <laughs> spicy mayo, or are you, you sticking with the eel sauce? I like the eel sauce. Oh. I'd be down to mix it up, but. All right, so Dylan's gonna try this one here. We got the spicy mayo on it. Let's see what, I know which one he's gonna prefer, but. Let's see, I'll give it a shot, to be fair. really good um with the spicy mayo it's not as overpowering as the eel sauce so you can taste the fish a lot more um but i on the other hand i love eel sauce all right my turn try to get that i need a nice camera besides the gopro it's official but there we go we got the spicy mayo on there cucumber avocado oh god Man down, Dylan. <laughs> Sorry, can you hold that thing? I got my botched tripod.
You're totally right. You can definitely taste the fish a little more. It's like that spicy mayo gives you that initial little kick and then it's gone. Right. And then you taste all the other ingredients. Um, yeah, it's good to mix it up. I prefer the eel sauce though. I don't know what it is about it. <laughs> it's just delicious. It's yeah. like, it's like candy. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy because you and I could have usually gone out for sushi tonight and spent, what, a hundred bucks between the two of us? Yeah. Or 80 bucks, 60, 80 bucks. But with what we have in the freezer, we can still make it at home with just some tempura batter and obviously super easy ingredients, stuff that most people get every time they go to the grocery store anyways. Like definitely less than a ten dollar investment every yeah. time. Yeah. For like for two people. Yeah, you bought the groceries. How much did you spend on it? Yeah, I mean cucumbers <laughs> and avocados and right. our sauces and stuff. Like nothing crazy. Yeah. We yeah. have the sauces already. The Oktoberfest is probably the most expensive piece of the puzzle, but. Huh. Yeah, with the fish that we keep on a regular basis, cook awesome. a couple pounds at a time. It's really pretty inexpensive to do this at home. Sweet. Well, that turned out great. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that and are gonna try it at home. Um, yeah, drop a comment below if you guys ever have tried fried fish sushi besides obviously the tempura stuff um, or are going to try it. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you guys on the next one. What are we doing next, Dylan? Um, we gotta do something, man. We gotta get some saltwater and freshwater adventures in before the end of the year, so. I know. It's kind of messing us up. Like, honestly, this is the best time of year, like, weather-wise. And it's like, it's been sheet glass the last few days, but all of our coastline's still close to that oil spill. So, all my normal spots that we go for rockfish, halibut, lobster, all that stuff. Like, I'm, I have to go up north or down south and learn some new spots, so. We might do a, we got to do another island trip soon before the end of the year. Yeah, that'd be good. So yeah, we got maybe we'll go, to fish. yeah, we'll, we'll take my boat back out there and hopefully have better weather than when we took uh, Victor and Brooke out there. And then we can hit the rockfish spots, hit some halibut spots and uh, actually kind of dive for some lobster. We got to get Dylan in a wetsuit. Maybe one, I got to get him out there. Maybe swimming. one year, you yeah. know, <laughs> one year I'll try it. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Thanks again for watching guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one and we're going to finish off all this fish right now.